episode 10 of MMTA Q&A. This will be the last episode in series 1. Series 2 will return later in the year. In the meantime, we're concentrating on making available our first set of courses, which we hope to have available in September. Okay, here's a question, Warren. This is, this is one of these really contentious issues that uh, a lot of critics of MMT and a lot of progressive heterodox economists weighed in on. It's from Stephen. I've read somewhere that MMT considers exports as a cost to a nation's economy. Mainstream thinking sees exports as a benefit, bringing wealth, money into the exporting economy. Can you please explain the contradiction between those two positions? Well, first of all, mainstream economics is, my view is totally mainstream economics. There's a, did you see the video by uh, Milton Friedman from 1978? Yeah, I've seen Explaining it. exactly, you know, what I said, that exports are the real cost, imports are the benefits. They're sending us stuff, getting friends. And Paul Krugman has that in one of his early textbooks. And so did all, all, this, all, all the old textbooks. So the mainstream approach is, what they're looking at is nominal versus real. They're getting the money confused with the real economy. and they're catering to export. So just, let's right. just go back. Yeah. What do you mean by that? The, yeah. the nominal and the real. Okay. The best way to look at trade is as a productivity story, which it is. Okay. So if you take any, let's say you take a box and uh, we, you've got an agri agrarian society, everybody 90 here, 200 years ago, 99% of the people have to work in the field or we all starve. Take, you take this box and you fill it up with lumber, put the cover on and out comes a tractor. And so now, Everybody doesn't have to plow the fields anymore. We have, need a lot fewer people plowing the fields. So now we can do other things. We can become university professors and healthcare professionals. And we can be in the military so we can defend ourselves without worrying about starving to death because we've had a productivity increase. The same food takes a lot fewer people to produce than it did before. That's a good thing. So then we take maybe some other innovation that does that. You put this lumber in the box and put the cover on and out comes automobiles. And now all of a sudden the horse business is shut down and we've lost all those jobs and horses. But now our productivity is tremendously increased and all those people that were tied up, couldn't travel, you know, can't do things. And now, now let's, instead of a box, let's call it a boat. If you take that boat and put some wood in it, send it to Korea and it comes back with a tractor, it's like, this is terrible. <laughs> Cause now you've displaced all these Americans who have been plowing the fields and now there's a tractor and all our work. We paid the Koreans, they got all our money. But no, it's a productivity story. You look at what did I have to put in this box in order to get what comes out of the box, right? So trade is, most cases, a positive productivity story for the nation. You know what you have to put in the box, that's all your exports, and you're getting all your imports, and you made the decision, I'm better off. Okay, the same as building any machine, same as building a box that could do it magically, you put a box that goes on a boat and comes back. So you know, so you have to look at the export, the foreign sector as an enterprise and look at the productivity gains. So what happens when you have productivity gains? What happens when all the farmers lose their jobs? Well, now they have wind up with jobs doing a lot of other things. Today, only 1% of the population is in farming. So we've lost 99%. And unemployment didn't go to 99%. We, everybody used to be in manufacturing. And now only 7% of the people are in manufacturing. If we went to 8% and got our manufacturing back, this room would be filled with junk. I wouldn't be able to talk to you, okay? So the rest is all services. And it allows us to do all these other things that are certainly higher value added, more product, positive productivity stories. But if we don't understand our own monetary system, what I'll now introduce as an unspent income story, which is an unemployment story, if we let a productivity story turn into an unspent income story, all of a sudden we have unemployment because of things being made overseas. And those farmers now, we instead of using them for all these other things, which we've done over the last 200 years, where they're still sitting in the fields waiting to do something, then, then there are no gains from trade. So the gains from trade come in freeing up your people and then understanding how you use your monetary system to deploy them or allow them to be deployed into the private sector or the public sector. Those are all political choices. You know, we all benefit enormously. So China, for us, with this trade deficit, means we're getting a lot more from China than we're giving China. That's an enormous productivity gain for the United States. And what, what we're trying to do is kill the goose that's laying gold and egg. And the only story that even half makes sense, which to me doesn't make any sense, is, well, it's not sustainable long term. So we should kill the goose now and stop taking gold and egg. I say take them as long as you can. 
Now you have to modify it. You have to understand that if you have strategic, strategic reasons to be doing something yourself, even though it takes a lot more people to do it, it lowers your real standard of living and whatnot, you do it. So the steel for your military, you probably should build that at home. Your critical medical stuff, maybe a good idea to build it here in case there's an emergency or something like that. So let's, the last part of this bill is what is the real wealth of a country, the real stuff? Yeah. So I call it your pile of stuff. So that's everything you can produce domestically. How do you maximize your domestic? Well, it's everything you can produce domestically adds to your pile. All the imports make your pile bigger. And then the exports make your pile smaller. So you want as big a pile as possible. So it's everything you can produce domestically plus your imports minus your exports. And again, this is mainstream economics for hundreds of years. For us, it's like making your domestic pile bigger is, is, is where the biggest gains are, right? And all the unemployment you have, those people working makes your domestic pile of stuff larger. So your domestic potential is reached when everybody's working and then you optimize your productivity. And the only way you can grow is to either have more people working or to get more out of whoever's already working, which is increasing productivity. Okay, so your whole employment story about creating full employment dwarfs the trade aspect for any country. The huge losses are always from unemployment. And, once, and the bigger your pile of stuff, the more stuff you have to trade for, to export, to be able to import. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, Stephen, I hope that answers your question. Well, that's it for season one. We hope you've enjoyed this series. We'll be back later in the year with a slightly different format, but we're experimenting as we go. And I'd just like to thank everybody who's donated to MMT Ed so far. We really appreciate your help. So until next time, see you later.